All humans are stardust. All humans share a chemistry with all a biology with all other life on earth. So why not look around and say, I'm not special because I'm a different. I'm special because I'm the same as you, as others, as the tree, as the brook, as the animals, you know, the woodland creatures. And we can all sit here and look up at the night sky and say, yes, we have kinship with the cosmos. I feel large because of that, not small. I think we're an evolved enough species to say, no, there is a right and a wrong. There's a better path and a, and, a, and a not so good path. There is a transcendent self, at least, to chase. A better self, a projection. I think it's fair to project and believe in a delayed gratification that, no, I want my life to have some escalation. Yeah, I know it's going to have its downs and ups, but I want it to have at the end at least to have a small ramp. Or what the hell are we doing here? Or what is evolution? You know, so at least to chase after that. I think like in life, you can get whatever you want, but you can't want whatever you want. If you don't want it, there's no creating it. And if you really wanted it, you wouldn't need this like inspirational podcast to make you make that decision. You'd already be doing it. Um, and that's not it to be defeatist. It just means that like the only goal that anyone should have in life is one of happiness and fulfillment. And like this idea that you have to win to be happy could not be further from the truth. Why do we hear about rock stars and famous actors and these people that we see as sort of like the, the absolute apex of success in the industry? Why are they all fucking killing themselves and dying of alcoholism and like all that darkness happening at the highest level? It's like, because that doesn't equal happiness. Like, what is happiness for you? Your mind, your emotions, your body. You have 100% control over what you do with these things. And that's where the game is won. You win the inner game. Then you win the outer game. But a lot of people spent their life trying to win the outer game. They won and they're miserable. You look at your life as you look into the future and say, what fears am I holding on to? What fears that I'm allowing to imprison me that's keeping me from breaking out? That's keeping me from living up to my true potential? That's keeping me from really being happy? that's keeping me from having a sense of adventure and excitement in my life. What's, what's keeping me from controlling my destiny? What fears that I'm giving that permission to? Notice what I said, that we must give our permission to fear to immobilize us. Because whatever discomfort you experience, whatever challenges or difficulty that it is, you got to handle it. Got to go up in there and wrestle with it. Will it be easy? No. Will it be challenging? Yes. See myself confronting my fears, handling my fears. I'm more than able. If you're struggling, if you're frustrated with yourself, if you're at that point where you're so sick of yourself and your excuses. I've been there, Steven's been there. This is a normal part of the human experience. And at some point, either the pain is going to get big enough or you're going to bump into somebody's story somewhere on this planet who has been in the position that you're in right now, facing the stuff that you're facing right now, and there is something about their story at this exact moment in time that will ignite something in you that is missing, and what is missing in you right now is hope. Because when you're stuck and when you are on a downward spiral, whether it's just in your own head or it's in self-destructive behavior, the thing that's missing in your life is hope. You don't believe right now that anything is gonna make a difference. What if this is the time sobriety sticks? What if I go to therapy and I actually do change the way that I think? What if I could recover from this narcissistic abuse that I've you know, been kind of struggling with after that relationship or that marriage? What if I could get out of debt? If that person did it, maybe I could do it. And without either hope or that kind of rock bottom moment, 
I don't think you're going to change. Scratch is what makes you better. Scratch, friction, obstacles create growth. There's no friction when you're this far up in the game anymore. You think there right, is. When you're real. Cheap, That's yeah. right. When you cheat so much, the friction is, is, is minor. Because why? I'm sore. I'm going to get a massage today. I'm hungry. I'm going to eat today. The refrigerator is always full. So your comforts are now, so your discomfort is now very minuscule to your discomfort back here in the $7 a month place. So you have to go back to the total discomfort to then raise your level of where you're at now. Mm. I'm not saying stay there and stay there. Visit. Visit it. And then you raise your level. You, you begin to realize that your dream and your gifts have so much meaning and so much value for you till your hunger for them will begin to push you past the fear. Your hunger to have them will give you a special drive as you work on yourself, as you begin to acknowledge your true identity, the true power that you have, the true capacity you have to bring about change, the miracle working power that you have within yourself to do the things that you want to do. And once we learn to make choices that measurably pay us back, give us more residuals for longer term, for longer time in life, we start to fall into that wise place of being able to navigate the art of living where life becomes a little bit more of a dance. You're sitting on the edge of the bed trying to have an honest dialogue with yourself. And the little voice says, you know, it's pretty disgusting in here. And you think, well, I'm way above such trivial niceties as organizing my room. It's like, well, that's pride. That's arrogance. If you're above organizing what's actually yours, how in the world are you ever going to organize anything else? And so you get on your knees and you think, well, it's time to, you know, take a brush to the toilet. And maybe that's where you start. And so, and that works. Like, that works. You start making those micro-improvements, like real micro-improvements, real on-the-ground actual micro-improvements to things you know that are wrong, you'll improve unbelievably rapidly. If you don't have hope, and you don't have this breakthrough where you have for just a millisecond this insight where you go well what if things did work out if you don't have that moment most people stay so stuck in resignation there are um, so many people that are not aware of how much better and how much more present and how much more joy they could experience in their life See, when you are not filling your life with the things that you are capable of doing, see, we all have some stuff that we've been given. And I don't think that it's optional for us to sit on what we have. See, if you're sitting on what you have, what you've been given, and I think everybody's been given something to bring to the planet, that only you can do that, only you can perform that, only you can initiate that activity. And if you don't do that, if you're not filling in your life with your life work or your mission, then there are gaps in your life. And what we do when we're not living out our true identity, we begin to fill the gaps. We fill the holes with garbage. Success is getting what you want. Fulfillment is living what you're made for. This is dreams we're talking about. We're talking about dreams. Can you train your brain to appreciate because in the middle of whatever you're pissed off about or frustrated or fearful about or worried about, you're deleting all the things you could be grateful for, you could appreciate that are absolutely real. Be your own motivator and you build yourself up. And that's the problem with the mind. You know, I want your listeners or viewers to really think about this. You do not experience life. You experience the life you focus on. That's it.